Vem kommer där nede i blodrött skjort, fyllet och traset, stygg och färd? Fjäse gustet, gult och rynket, fullt av blåliga svarta fläckar. Norske amerikanerne er i Hamningberg nær Vardø, og det tar ikke lang tid før de skjønner at dette blir en litt annerledes uke i alt for Norge. Den står så langt. Jeg ser ikke noen hjelkeys i det. Jeg ser ikke noen hjelkeys i det. Det ser ikke ut som noen hjelkeys i det. Vi prøver en annen dør. Hva er dette? Det er en struktur her, guys. Det er en fisking og fisking, kanskje? Ja, ja. Det er så bandet her. Det er ikke noen rundt. Det er så rundt. Hva tror du om å gå ned her for en liten tid? Hva tror du om å gå ned her for en liten tid og se disse husene? Jeg vet ikke. Kanskje det er noen på hjemme. Hummingberg var denne veldig desolat, spukke, forgåtte byen. Det var denne glømme dagen. Vi gikk gjennom alle disse abandonte byene og husene. Det er også de plantene der, som er tvistet og kragge. There's something, there's something looming in Hamningberg. Oh, 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 oh. Here's a... Ah, there's Nino and his shoe on. Holy that Blair Witch Batman. Right Why isn't she wearing any shoes? <laughs> there's a rake. What is she holding? No, rake. I do not want to go anywhere near that person, though. Like, uh, I, wanna, I kind of want to follow see them and see I where they're in. going. Why would you want to follow? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, let's go follow. We got to follow the, the Reaper. Yeah. We got to see what's going on here seeing a figure walk through with a rake and a broom was unsettling. <laughs> it was also awesome. It, it bordered on scary and Scooby-Doo mystery. But uh, it, was, it was probably more frightening just to watch Kelsey's response because she was legitimately scared. Uh, guys, I don't like this at all. This is, uh, this is messed up. Like, why is there gravestones and why is there grave sites like right in front of this old house in an abandoned town? All I don't like it. I don't like it. And they're all unmarked. Gosh. Everyone kept looking in windows. I didn't want to even look in the windows just because, like, anything could be in there that might just pop out at you. I don't know. I think just have a bad nervous reaction to creepy places. That's all. Why do you guys want me to look <laughs> in the window? I'll look in with you, Kelsey. Okay. Oh, it's really dark in here. I don't know, we need to go in. Why do we need to go in? Because that's what explorers do. Because that's what explorers do. We want to find out the mystery. That's why we left that cemetery. We were like, okay. This place is crazy. Okay. Let's see. Oh, what's in the store? Oh, look at this painting over here. What do we have here? Hello, Blu-ray. Oh, hi. So we walk into the room and we see a number of paintings and we see some rats all around. And then all of a sudden in the corner of the room, boom, our host is dead. Ah! It's Rachel! Ah! 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 Come on now. <laughs> he was lying there. He was dead. He decomposed very quickly and his skeleton was just there. We were all very, very sad. Tough to see. Tough to see him go like that. We didn't expect it, but... Reach out's dead. Oh, he was like writing a letter. <laughs> what does it say? Oh. Kelsey you got it. It's all you believe. Why did you guys make you. me do this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the plague, she's coming. Pesta kommer over berg og dal, skog og eng, sjø og elv, fjord og fjære. Labber, skvabber, knærne skrangler. Rager og river, soper. Feier. Riven tar mange. Limen. Alle. The rake takes many, the broom takes all. Ooh. Ooh. The rake. Uh, yeah. The sickness. Yeah. Ew. 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 The image of, of a person barefoot walking off into the mist. That's a scary image. Like, you don't want to see that ever. Like, nah, that's not something I want to have a picture of in my brain and in my memory of things that happened in Norway. 
Norges historien er slett ikke bare lys og positiv. Den har også sine mørke sider. På 1600-tallet kastet beskyldninger om trolldom og hekseri dystre skygger over landet. Både kvinner og menn ble brent levende dømt for å ha påført sykdom og død på mennesker og dyr. Men til og med før dette mørke kapittelet i historien skjedde det fæle ting i Norge. I 1349 kom den grusomme svarte dauen på et skip til Bjørgvin. Pesten var dels en byllepest som det var mulig å overleve, og dels en lungepest som var den sikre død. Sykdommen tok i løpet av kort tid livet av over halvparten av Norges befolkning. Og denne konkurransen handler om nettopp pesten. Rundt om i Hamningberg ligger 15 uheldige sjeler som har blitt offer for svartedauen. Lagene må vurdere hvem av dem som har fått lungepest, og hvem som har den mer synlige byllepesten. Jeg er ikke bra med body stuff. If I started using descriptive language uh, about the wounds and stuff, I would actually probably be physically ill. Finner de byller på de syke, kan de reddes om de fraktes til sykehuset. Men har de lungepest, må de døende bæres til sitt evige hvilested. I think the nature of the competition is well placed for a very gray day in the Arctic. Denne uka er det Lars som har Spirit Award, og han er dermed fritatt fra konkurransene. Det røde laget består av Richard, Kelsey, Thomas og Kate. I'm feeling pretty good about this competition. I don't really have any fears. I don't really want to get the plague, so it's going to be my goal. Just don't get sick. Og det blå laget består av Johnny, Lauren, Jeff og Joni. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. We just have to like really search the people well to see if we can find those black boils and bring them to their rightful places. Norske amerikanerne får 20 minutter på å fullføre oppgaven, og laget som sorterer flest mennesker riktig får en fordel i neste konkurranse. Hei der! Let's take a look at you. There we go. There we go. And Joni, we might need your help yep. lifting this guy. Are we doing over the shoulder? I'm gonna get on that side, right? Okay. My strategy for our blue team was to take, check each person if they had boils or no boils. Boils infirmary, no boils the graveyard. Yep, he's got boils on his leg. <laughs> Okay guys, I don't think he has anything on him. We'll see, I'm on you. Wanna go for another ride? <laughs> okay, more, more, more. Together, Thomas and I can take care of people. Okay. I'm sure you guys, they're sick. Be really gentle with them. Okay, I got a, I got a boil here. Okay, here, I'll take them. Once I saw the first boil, I was like, that's it. Gotta get these people to the hospital. <laughs> Uh, I think the most difficult part of the competition, believe it or not, was actually discerning whether they had bubonic plague or pneumonic plague because some of their clothes clothes were tight, tight were tight fitting. Sometimes they like they were a little bit hidden. Like this one man that I I like searched all of him. I couldn't find anything, and then I was like, I'm gonna look behind his neck. Ooh. We're coming, Johnny. <laughs> okay, he's no boils. He has boils. All right. He's. He's going to the sickhus. Okay. Oh, you sit down. You sit. There you go. Okay. Make sure you walk really carefully. Okay. Richard is a, an animal. I can't believe how much he can just person after person after person. He's like throwing them over his shoulder. He's an, he's an awesome, awesome person to have on a team like this, definitely. Take a rest. Okay, lean over my shoulder. Okay. Oh, the most difficult part was, for me, was just the endurance part. I don't know how many people I carried, uh, but man, they were getting heavier and heavier and heavier. All I could think about was, I got to do it. I got to get all these people here where they need to go so I can help the rest of the team. And so I never stopped. How many do we have left? Three. Keep it up. I think our blue team worked very well together. We grabbed them and hoisted them up the best we could and we moved quickly and efficiently. Just hit it. Shira. Okay, I got her leg. 50 feet, come on, guys. Get it, Kate. How many are over there? We don't have 15. 
One, two, How many three, do we four, have? five, six, seven, eight. That's only 13. What the fuck? One, two, There's three, four, five, five, six, over here. seven, eight. Eight. Thirteen? There's two more. You're missing two more? Two more people? Yeah, that was, my heart sank a little bit in that moment. How many were at the infirmary? Five. Where the frick are these people? Over here! Over here! Ah! I got you, baby! What do you got, Kate? I got a child. All right. Infirmary, oh, quick. Come on it's out. easier. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's one over there. There's a man. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Oh. Yay! We found one. You're gonna be okay. All right. Here we go. Oh. All right, watch your feet. You two can set her down. Let okay, me go down first. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Blue. I'm dead. Sorry, Lauren, what did you say? I, I got double checked to these guys, but I feel like we double checked a lot, so. Good job. I thought we brought him to the infirmary first. I did. I did. Yeah. I brought him to the hospital. Why is he here? <sighs> Oops. Yanni, could you please ask him if he walked? No, we carried him over. When? I brought him to the hospital. I did. He was sitting over there. No, I think we carried and him. And there was no, a gal I, next I to him. I carried him by myself, and I sat him down. Or wait, did I carry him all the way to here? I remember the exact spot that I set him in the hospital. You wanna go for another ride? <laughs> I I don't know what what why I picked him back up. I don't remember doing that. Huh. I do kinda remember being like, okay, let's go again. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I have no clue what my thought process was between setting them down and picking them back up. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I'm alive. Uh, hey. It was great seeing Free Chaff alive again. That was perfect. Needless to say, thrilled to see walking, living Free Chaff come back for us. Unless it was zombie free chaff, but I'm not too concerned about that. Jeff, was it hard work to carry all those people? It was like falling in love during a fist fight. It was <laughs> trying, trying to stay alive and loving these wonderful Norwegians. Yes, yeah. it was hard. Carrying limp, lifeless people into a gravesite, and you're completely exhausted, and you're about to crap your pants. Like, it felt to us what war felt like. Kate, how did you feel when you saw the sick children? Oh, it was like... I wanted to do everything I could to save them. I just wanted did. to hold on to them all day. There is no way I would have ever done this in real life, ever, because I don't like germs. So I would have been like, sorry, you're sick. I'll pray for you. Even though the plague was devastating for Norway, it actually brought some good things with it as well. You see, when it was all over, there was a huge demand for workers in the cities and prosperous farms all over the country were left uninhabited. This led to a golden age where everyone had work and people who starved before the plague suddenly had food on their plates. And you all helped to save a lot of those people today. We are very blessed not to live in a medieval period. Wow. To have a plague go around that so many of your loved ones could die or you could die, I can't imagine that. Both teams managed to get almost everything right. And the team that wins today and gets an advantage in the next competition is... Team Red! <laughs> Winning feels good. It feels good to win. I, it's just one less thing to worry about with the upcoming uh, competition next.
Congratulations, you guys. Richard, how many did you carry by yourself? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I think it was eight or something like that. <laughs> I like to believe that's the true Viking no in me. Way. Yeah. Jeez. Team Blue, a little five-year-old boy would have been alive today if you hadn't put him in the graveyard. I'm sorry, he would have been 670 years old, but he would have been alive. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we'll just move on and wait for tomorrow, I guess. Do good tomorrow. If you walk up to that road and follow it, you will come to a yellow house. That's where you're going to spend the night. But beware. Oh, no. Because strange things happen here oh, after no. nightfall. I'll sleep with you, okay? Yeah. It'll be all right. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Glad you're alive. Oh, Glad God. you're alive. I just kind of want to get out of this place. Like, I don't really want to sleep here tonight after hearing all that. I'm thinking I'd like to be back in a warm, cozy bed. Like, the reason why this kind of freaks me out is like, so we just did the Black Plague stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, what is there people that are still here that kind of like spirits that haunt this place? That's kind of like what I'm like. I hope so. <gasps> Maybe. No, yeah, why would you say great. that? That's just what, like, I'm just kind of freaked out. Sacrifice, guys. Oh. Oh. No! Oh, oh. Yeah, that's oh, what they're that? doing. Oh, God. They're they're putting... Not okay. Not okay at all. Like, uh, it just felt so just bad. It doesn't feel good to watch at all. That was sad. What, what, who is this? What are we doing? This is the witch uh, Ingeborg Jorgensdatter. From what we know of her today, she confessed that she could uh, blow up cows, and her apostle was none other than the devil himself. Whoa! And uh, the local court had tried her on the water ordeal, and she floated. And in those days, we believed that it was only witches or timber that could float. So she floated. She was a witch. She had to be burned. Were they dead either way, whether they sank or floated? No. Yeah, some did. No, they, everybody survived the water ordeal. Okay because they would have a rope connected to them so they can pull them up. But usually you float, so. It was a pretty wild feeling. Um, knowing that this was a practice that they actually participated in, call it 400 years ago, pretty, pretty wild and pretty, uh, pretty gut churning in a sense. That's what actually happened back in the day. And it's like, that was a burning person back in the day. Like that is what they did with people probably that had the plague and the witches that were being burned as well. So they burned all the bodies, but the witches were burned alive, which is just, it just seems like a very intense time to live. After pausen, skal norskamerikanerne være hekser. I think that competition is going to be fun, hilariously fun. <laughs> Og de skal bli godt kjent med en av havets delikatesser. <laughs> Deltagerne er i Finnmark denne uka for å utforske Norges mørke side. De har konkurrert om å redde mennesker smittet av svartedauen og rødt lag vant. Nå har de beveget seg inn til mer siviliserte strøk, nærmere bestemt Vardehus festning. Through 
through that dark and cold. Made it through that dark and cold. I don't know, but it's been said. I don't know, but it's been said. The body of sun making my eyes red. The body of sun making my eyes red. Sound off. Sound off. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. 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 Guys, doesn't this feel so much better than being at the haunted Place. This is where they tortured the people. You like think? It. This is what she said. She said the worst the torture was in the fort Varda. Varda. Oh, fortress. Did yeah. she really? So how do you like Varda? I love it. It's pretty. I love it. It's beautiful. I wouldn't mind staying here long. Kelsey. Does it feel good to be back in 2016? Ah, it feels great to be back <laughs> to normal, yeah. Vardø is on the northeastern tip of Norway, and it's known for its harsh climate. And you see that tree back there? That's actually the only tree in Vardø. What? <laughs> no. It's true. Wow. Because of the Arctic climate, no trees can survive the winter, so every year, the people here wrap this tree up to protect it from the cold. Oh. <laughs> and they're very proud of it, so you should all pay your respects to the tree afterwards. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> little tree over there that's like I don't know maybe seven feet tall is the single tree I bet everyone like comes by and it's just like oh tree today Varda is a peaceful town but it hasn't always been like this back in the 17th century the people here felt threatened by witches and they thought that they flew around on broomsticks and threw curses on helpless villagers and the only thing that the so-called witches could do to protect themselves was to throw accusations of witchcraft onto other villagers and hope that the town would change its focus onto them. And in today's competition, you are going to be the town witches. <laughs> you're going to throw curses, and of course you're going to do it while flying around on broomsticks. Yeah, I think the medieval tradition of getting out of uh, witchcraft accusations by putting blame on someone else is horrible and nightmarish, and it caused untold thousands of deaths in the medieval world. So it's a horrible thing, but I'm glad that we're making something fun out of this horrible, deadly tradition. I denne konkurransen skal de amerikanske heksene angripe intetanende vardøværinger med forbannelser i form av vannballonger. We're having a water balloon fight. No one's throwing water balloons back. Like, it's perfect. Reglene er enkle. Vannballongene trenger ikke å sprekke, men de må treffe. Og det laget som forbanner flest folk vinner. I have no strategy for today other than to stay on the segway, not break my neck, just nail some people with some water balloons. Siden rødt lag vant forrige konkurranse for de 18 ballonger, mens blått lag får 16. Jeg tror at konkurransen skal være fun. Hilariously fun. <laughs> Team Red Witches, er du ready til å gjøre dette? Vi er ready. Ok. Ready, set, go! So we made a strategic decision to target our densest cluster of three. Maybe that was a good idea, maybe not, because they could move a little bit from side to side, but they, I think, were the stablest targets, so we just stuck with it. <laughs> the villagers were very far away. It was hard, like, normally you wouldn't fire a water balloon from so far away. You'd, like, sneak up and get close, and then you're like, bah! Or at least that's my style. Come 
on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Kels! Yes! yes. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> you're just in the moment when you're on that broom, you know, and it just comes out so naturally, that cackle. <laughs> oh, sweet meat to curse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you're reading the news. Did you know you're about to get cursed? <laughs> oh, I do <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Come back, 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 Okay, Kelsey, go! <laughs> Come on, Kelsey! Oh, oh shit. Are you okay, Kelsey? You all right, Kelsey? Yeah, I'm okay. Yep. Ow. My broomstick's a little broken. Are you okay, Kelsey? Um, I'm all right. When Kelsey fell down today, it was like time stopped. She was just parallel to the ground. And I felt really bad. I was wanting to make sure she was okay, but honestly, I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I kind of want to see it in slow motion. It was like, and then boom. I'm just so glad she didn't break her arm. I thought for sure she probably would have broke her wrist or something. Apparently I was going a little fast on my broomstick today and you know, it just kind of got out from under me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have some bruises, but no broken bones. So, oh, Kate cast a healing spell on me earlier. So yeah, we should be all right. Woo. Good job, Kelsey! Oh my word. Yeah, girl. Nice and steady, take your time. Yeah. <laughs> take your time. Man, she just jumped right back up and got right back on, kind of shook her wrists out and grabbed a balloon and was like, all right, let's do this. It was awesome. Direct hit. She just was like, what? Did I just fall down? Oh, I'm gonna cast a spell on you. And like nails it. Who does that? Oh, Kelsey does that. <laughs> Get closer. Oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> You've been lucky the last two times. Now your time is up. <laughs> Slow and steady. Oh. Okay, last one. Last one. Well done, Team Red. This might be my favorite competition, actually. The whole situation was so ridiculous and absurd and dressing up and throwing water balloons. It was just, it was awesome. Hey, witches. Hey. hey. There were a lot of curses thrown around today, but far from everyone hit their mark. Some of you were also far better broom pilots than the others. <laughs> and especially Kelsey, you were the only one that actually flew today yeah. in a spectacular fashion. Thank you, thank you. Are you okay? I am okay, yeah. Alt for Norgay. Yeah, yeah. Alt for Norgay. That's a spirit. <laughs> but even though this competition was full of costumes and water balloons and segways, it's also quite serious because the winning team is safe for another week and the losing team 
will have to compete in an individual competition tomorrow, and one of you will be sent home from Altfornodge. When Fritjof is getting ready to tell us who wins, all that's going through my mind is say Team Red, say Team Red, say Team Red, you know? After this week, I just want that win, you know, for my team, for myself, and honestly, for Richard. After all the work he did yesterday, I was like, I just want to win this so that he can be safe for this week. And the winning team is... Team Red. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm happy. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm glad I don't have to go to an individual competition. I didn't want to have to. And it's the first time in a couple weeks that I haven't had to. So I'm just happy to not have to worry about it. I promised I would go and take back all the spells I cast if I oh, good. If we won. So good. there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> Kate? <laughs> If you're going to take back all the spells you cast today, you're going to take back 11 spells. Whoa! While you guys hit six of your spells. Oh. <laughs> so it was a pretty hands down victory, this oh. one. <laughs> now we got to go into the individual. And it's, it's pointless to like get down, I guess. You know, it's not going to help you at all tomorrow. So I guess all we can do tonight is prepare for what, <laughs> who knows what Alt for Norge will make us do. But I can probably surmise that we're going to have something about witchcraft, witches, and the history of witchcraft in this region. But, man, who knows? Anybody's game. But I think there's been enough gloom and doom this week. Vardo has a lot more to offer than plagues and witches. So now you can all go down to the seaside and have a look at the Arctic harbor down there. Ooh. And Lars, you can join them. All right. It's good to be okay. back, guys. Good to be back. De siste årene har Vardø blitt kjent for noe mer enn bare fisk og beinharde vintre. Byen har fått en ny dimensjon etter at flere verdenskjente gatekunstnere ble invitert hit. De fikk bruke mange av bygningene her som lærret, og det har gjort Vardø til en unik visuell opplevelse. This is so cool. That looks kind of like your artwork, Tom. Oh, thank you. I was busy last night. I think getting to walk around um, Vardø and see the street art was potentially one of my, you know, top two, three experiences on the whole trip. Oh, oh wow. wow! That's cool. Wow. I didn't even know people missing that. I totally know this guy. Um, yeah. wow. My buddy had a piece of his in his house. Uh, Connor Harrington, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. This is the era that he always uh, paints, and he does a lot of uh, fist fights and sword really? fights, and yeah. What are the chances on the back of a mural wall next to the pier that he knew the artist? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty remarkable that Tommy knew that. You see on his hair and his beard how it seems to come off the facade a little darker more? How did they do that, an extra layer of paint? They used uh, obviously different kinds of paint. You can see some of the spray paint in there. Mm -hmm. And then Thomas is an artist himself, and, and he knows a lot of artists. And for him to be able to say, gosh, this looks like a, I don't know the guy's name right now, but I mean, he can literally recognize the style of art and say, well, this belongs to this famous artist. And sure enough, you know, he's right. This is so cool. I think generally speaking, street artists tend to find people and places that have been marginalized by history or politics and sort of give those things a voice. And so I think Vardu is a perfect place in that way. It's not as strange as you might think to find a bunch of street art here um, because in a way it has been marginalized by history. Hello. Oh, Could we ask you for your help? 
Yes. Yes. yes! We would like you to help us with our king crab today. Yes! yes. Our dainty catch. Who would like to help us with some king crab? I did not expect that. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. They're alive. Oh, 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 yeah. I was thinking maybe, you know, crabs like I know at home. <laughs> These guys were massive. It was so cool. They are oh. massive. If you're not scared, we'll grab them from the back butt legs. I'm sorry. Oh, he's tougher than you realize. I'm sorry. He's heavy. I'm sorry. Wow. Look at him. You know, you pick it up and it's moving all its legs and oh, it was wonderful. What's some bigger king crab? Jesus. All right. <laughs> yeah, they wanted us to help them weigh them, and so we grabbed a hold of them and started weighing them. Yeah. Right there. Don't make no keep don't make him fight. <laughs> look at the, look at watch him unwind here. It was great for me to kind of get back into my marine biologist element. It's it's a magnificent animal. And I actually have a pet crab at home in my office, and her name is Lucille. And not frokost. Skadelika not frokost, Lucille. And I miss her dearly. And she likes to clean off my skin. When I put my hand in the tank, she kind of like latches on and like, you know, cleans my nails for me. It's nice. It's like, it's like those fish that you put your feet in and they scrub off the dead skin. That's what my pet crab Lucille does for me. Would you like to kill one? Oh, sure. So we can have it for dinner? Yes. Yeah. 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 And who would like to kill it? <laughs> we have two. Very good. Very good. Very good. Here's some gloves. Yeah, Joni. Where's the big guy? Uh, that looks like him. Yeah. Is this him? Okay, so should I flip him on his back? Can you put him on his back here? Just do this. I'm from the Geographical Center of North America, North Dakota. And so crab, when you do have it, is pretty darn expensive. So to be here and actually touch it and see it and know I get to eat it, oh, I am excited. <laughs> so what you would do is you go here and you have to use some energy and just, and then around. Does it matter? <laughs> Does that need to be separated? It will be separated because you'll have two pieces. You can do it, Joni. Okay. Is it a, is it a, quick, a quick? It's a very quick. Do they feel it? No. <laughs> no, no. They won't. Come on, Joni. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good, very good. I kind of was like, I want to watch, but I don't want to watch. And these will be pulled off afterwards. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not going to taste this crab. My last taste of fish was the lutefisk on day one, and I probably won't ever eat it again or any type of animal. Like, it just re like ignited my reasons for being vegan, I guess. But, yeah. I'm not against this, but it's just... I will never be a part of it. Coming from an area where hunting and fishing is something that you just naturally do, you enjoy it, you take pride in it, and you're also thankful for it. And like I said, it, it feels good to be able to do something that you're going to eat. Are you going to bless it? You better bless it. bless the kill. Yeah. So this is the hunter's this is the hunter's prayer. It's the same prayer all over the world. And the prayer you say whenever you have to take harvest an animal is, thank you for stopping King Crab so I can go on. It's a big deal. Um, so I hunt back home, and the hunter's prayer is what we say over all of our harvested animals. The hunter's prayer is simple. Thank you for stopping so I can go on. The most sacred meal I've had in Norway was on that dock. All right, everyone, watch where your food's going. I definitely never thought I'd be holding a king crab to end my day, let alone having my friends kill it and cook it, and then we eat it on a dock. It was gorgeous. And although I don't think I could ever live in Varda, I think that the scenery was just beautiful. Isn't this a beautiful setting too? It's so cool. Really, really nice. Is it ready? I'm okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, what an experience, you guys. Wow. It's so cool. I'll be there, Dad. Oh, look at that! Beautiful! That's like a $30 piece of meat. Oh, I'm so jealous of that. I'm... Oh. Yeah.
That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your girls would be so uh, proud of you. How does it taste? <laughs> it's so good, man. Etter pausen får Kate besøke familiegården sin. I just can't believe I'm even standing here. <laughs> Og taperlaget må ut i en avgjørende konkurranse. Oh. <laughs> I think this is gonna be a funny one. Våre norsk-amerikanske venner er denne uka i Finnmark. Her har de reddet pestrammede mennesker og vært landsbyhekser. Siden Kate var på vinnerlaget og ikke skal delta i den siste konkurransen, har hun fått anledning til å reise til slektsgården i Rissa i Sør-Trøndelag. Getting to visit the farm that my ancestors actually lived on is magical because it's like a tangible way for me to connect with them to stand where they stood would be amazing I just can't believe I'm even standing here I mean even thinking that any of my relatives could have lived here I can't even put into word. It's just so beautiful. It was hard to keep it together when I saw the houses that were very obviously old and from a time when my relatives lived here. To imagine them going in and out of those doors and looking through the windows and doing their daily work here, it just, it just humbles me for the way that I live today and it just makes me so grateful. Dear Kate, welcome to Rissa and the farm Bergeson. On July 22nd, 1869, almost 150 years ago, your great-great-grandparents, Johanna Johan's daughter and Johan Jacobson Bergeson, gave birth to their first son, Johan Martin, at this very place. <sighs> after a few years of marriage, life took a turn for the worse for the couple. Not even turning four, their firstborn son, Johan Martin, died. Losing Johan Martin was devastating for Johanna and Johan. And there would be more tragedy in this in store for the couple. In 1873, a new boy was born, whom they lovingly named after their firstborn, but it was as if the name was cursed. In 1894, the family once again had to bury a boy named Johan Martin. <laughs> When I read in the letter about my great-great-grandparents losing their child not once but twice, it just makes my heart break for them because I know that kind of loss, but instead of a child losing a mother, and I don't think either one is easier than the other, but it, it in a weird way, makes me feel even more connected to who they were. Kate missed moren sin da hun var ni år og det har gjort at hun lengter etter å finne ut mer om sin norske slekt. It's like getting to know not just me, but my mom and where she came from. It's like I'm getting to do this like for her. If she were alive, she would have done this, I bet. She probably would have been able to teach me about a lot of this or tell me about her great-grandparents and just the trouble they went through. The two deaths must have been unbearable, but they did what strong families do. <laughs> they got through it, and they did so together. In 1883, the sixth and last boy of the family was born. 
and his name was Bert August Johansson Bergeson. You know him as your great grandfather. Bert August grew up in Rissa in a time when the country was still poor, but Bert August had heard and read about the United States, the fabled place where dreams come true. Since he was the last born child, he didn't have the rights to take over this place after his parents. His brother did. That might seem unfair, but it ultimately gave your great-grandfather an opportunity to pursue happiness elsewhere. Early in March of 1906, your great-grandfather said goodbye to his parents and left Norway, never to come back. I don't know that I'm as adventurous as Bernd was, but I definitely think that even taking this journey to find out why he left and where he came from, it, I think it brings out a little bit of him and me in a way. Traveling to a foreign country, you know, hearing about how wonderful it is. It's like I'm a little bit of him, but just coming back to Norway instead of leaving for the US. Tilbake i Vardø er det snart tid for den avgjørende konkurransen. Svartedauen og hekseprosessene var mørke tider i Norge, og kanskje spesielt i sånne små samfunn som Vardø. Men det finnes også et annet mørke her oppe. Et mørke det er umulig å unngå, og som man bare er nødt til å lære seg å leve med. Jeg snakker selvfølgelig om mørketiden. Nord for Polarsirkelen sier sola takk for seg og har helt borte store deler av vinteren. Tilbake står tussmørke og polarnetter, og mange nordmenn synes mørketida kan være ganske tøff. Men heldigvis finnes det kunstige lyskilder som kan hjelpe litt på vinterdepresjonen. Nordmenn er også veldig flinke til å hygge og kose seg. Og både skigåing, sterinlys, hytteturer og peis bidrar til å gjøre mørketida litt mer overkommelig enn den ellers ville vært. For bor du i Norge, og særlig i nord, er du simpelthen nødt til å gjennomføre dagliglivet i mørke omgivelser deler av året. Og det er den utfordringen norsk-amerikanerne nå skal få bryne seg på. I stummende mørke skal deltagerne nå kle på seg, spise en brødskive med pålegg, drikke et glass appelsinjus, pusse tennene og så finne veien til utgangsdøren. Den som bruker lengst tid på å gjøre alt dette, må pakke kofferten og forlate Norge. Jeg tror dette er en veldig bra en. Jeg tror det er en veldig bra destruksjon. Jeg er en 260-pound dude, 6'2", i en rush, i en dark, prøvende å stå i Norge. Disse venn-diagramene overlapper til blod og gypsum på jorden. I'm kind of worried about hitting my head. Apparently there's some lamp somewhere that is a low hanging lamp. Ugh. All right. I'm up. I'm out. I'm walking down. I've hit the floor. I know it was black, like I couldn't see, but I think my brain just starts to like paint the picture. Like after I felt these things, I kind of can see it in my head a little bit. But I mean, there's still aspects of the house that I didn't put the pieces together, but I filled in the gaps with, I guess, mental pictures. Let's go back in here and see what we find in here. Cabinets, chair, living room, living room. There's my bunk bed again, so I'm back where I started. Okay, hope this is good. <laughs> God is great, God is good. Now we thank him for our food, amen. Someone drank my shoes. 
I'm gonna get my sister. It's going to Let's see, how many times have my hands crossed this shelf? <laughs> Quite a few. Am I getting a trick plate on me? Is the orange juice really not in here? You kind of go crazy, you're like, I've checked every single corner. Where is that orange juice? And then I got frustrated and the shells came out. Oh, geez. there we go, broke that. Oh well. And then I finally found it and I was like, Tony, come on. Spread it. Mens Johnny, Jeff og Lauren sitter og koser seg med frokosten, er Johnny allerede på vei til neste og siste post som er å pusse tennene. Ja, yeah, det var tid til å brushe det hvitt. Og bathroom var like rett rundt den kornet, kind of. For å få godkjent oppgaven må tannbørsten gnikkes fram og tilbake minst 15 ganger. Jeg tror at ting gikk svimmelig. Jeg fant alt rett og slett. Jeg brushte mine tennene. Jeg gjorde det et par ganger, bare i case. Johnny er ferdig med alle oppgavene, og det eneste han nå trenger å gjøre er å finne utgangsdøra. Men det er lettere sagt enn gjort. Det er like før samtlige norskamerikanere er ferdige med alle oppgavene. Men i likhet med Johnny er det flere som sliter med å finne veien ut. This is not claustrophobic at all. I think I was close to having a panic attack at the end. I don't I don't know what happened and I just turned into a crazy man. This is a bed. Wait, there is like I need to find out where my bed is. Got my bed. All right. There's the ladder. And I remember walking around here. Oh. Someone put something in my juice. Okay. And finding a door. Yeah, door. Oh, fuck. Oh, that door. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Thank God. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Johnny. Wow. <laughs> How was that? You know, I couldn't find the door to get out. <laughs> you can go join the others. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Your mission today was to get out of bed, get dressed, have breakfast, brush your teeth, and find your way out of that house, all in complete darkness. And I'm glad to say that all four of you managed to get this right. <laughs> you did look kind of crazy when you did it, but you got it right. And the master of Mörketid, with a winning time of six minutes and 22 seconds, is Lauren. Yeah. Congratulations. Good job, baby. <laughs> you can go stand next to the other. Oh, yeah. I think that was luck. <laughs> oh, so shocking because you've never done it that fast. <laughs> She's the late one. Good work, Lauren. I am always late. I'm late for everything I do. But I think I didn't realize what I have probably had more practice doing this than anyone here. You know, like, I got a final in three minutes. Holy balls. Like, get ready and, like, out the door. So maybe that helped a little bit today, I don't know. This means 
that one of you three will have to leave Alt for Norge today. Standing there, that's my third individual challenge where I've had Fritoff telling us that one of us is going home from Norway. It's like being slapped in the face with a fish. Jeff, I'm sorry. You only managed to finish second. And I know how much you wanted to win this. But at least you're safe for another week. Yeah, when Fritov said Jeff uh, right away, I was assuming that I was out. And, and then, of course, it was, a, it was a fake out, which made me kind of want to dick punch the guy. But luckily, it didn't come to that. Um, and I was very relieved when I found out that I was going to be in Norway. Johnny, you were actually the fastest at completing the tasks, but you had a tough time finding your way out of the house. And Joni, you did well, <laughs> but that orange juice, <laughs> you struggled and used I a know. lot of time finding the orange juice. I know. <laughs> I'm so frustrated with that orange juice. I'm mad at myself. So the person that lost this competition and has to go back to America today is. I'm really prepared for the loss, actually, because I felt that I spent a lot of time trying to find the door to the house. I had a little panic. It really got the best of me for a while before I kind of regained my, my composure a bit. <laughs> I most want the results to just not happen. <laughs> the results of a test. If you thought you did bad, oh, we can just wait till tomorrow or maybe the next day or next week. <laughs> we can find out. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so the person that lost this competition and has to go back to America today is Joni. I kind of knew it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. It's been a great dream. And some of us continue longer than others, so it's okay. Wow. I huggy hugs. Dark <laughs> clown. <laughs> I'm going to miss you so much. I'm not going to be the same without you. This adventurer. Mm, I'll see you soon in North Dakota, though. <laughs> I'm really going to miss her. I'm gonna miss her attitude and just her spirit. And I know that I will be picking some flowers every episode and, or at least photographing them and thinking of Joni. Okay, one last big yeah. star clap. Yeah. Best, Joni. Ah, I let it out. Ah! <laughs> you should pick one more flower before you go. Yeah, you gotta oh, pick another flower. Where are there flowers? Thanks for dressing my beard once. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're going to all have so much more fun. Okay. I'll miss you, John. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hey, Johnny. Hi. Hi. How are you? Som de andre som har reist hjem, får også Johnny en slektsbok med information om sin norske familie. And in this book is uh, your family tree. There are contact details to your living relatives. There are uh, stories of your ancestors. Oh, relative still owns the Adol farm. That's, that's, well. Wow. How has this journey been for you? I don't think my mind can wrap around everything that we all did. Because nah. <laughs> it's like a whirlwind, you know, like, because in a dream, you do all these wonderful, unimaginable things. I don't know why I was chosen out of so many to be part of this, but it really is a blessing to be able to go and see and do so many things that so many people wouldn't be able to do. It's very overwhelming to have mountains everywhere and continuous fjord you just keep exploring. It's like, I can't uh, Norway has so much to explore. I'm sure Norway's used to it, but don't take things for granted, and especially people that you love, because time is, I mean, how long will your dream last? There's so much beauty around you, and no smile. You know, makes a person happy, and it makes you happy too. 
but you have a wonderful place where you live. It's really beautiful. So explore it more and bring your family along. And a quick lunch bar. <laughs> and an orange, too. So. Here's my North Dakota princess. Here's the jump. Yeah. Here's the jump. Jonesy. Jonesy. Skull. 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 Got some snacks oh, for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that reindeer that heart? Like reindeer heart. Reindeer this, is, this is dried reindeer heart. Yes. What? And this is dried haddock. Oh, oh gimme, no gimme, gimme. Yeah. What, how did you guys guess that? When they make that reindeer heart, then they keep it outside so it freezes during the night and expands. And then it melts during the day and contracts again so it gets so tender yeah. and I can tell that you're yeah, loving it Thomas oh, you're really loving this it's good though it's like bacon. but I didn't only come bringing snacks uh -oh. Oh, I've got the little troll. troll with me this week the spirit award goes to someone who always motivates the group he's a man who always tries everything and he does it with a passion be that kissing dead pigs, <laughs> kissing uh, king crabs, kissing roos, swimming in freezing water, or carrying dead people until you almost die yourself. <laughs> Jeff, you are the big, strong, emotional backbone of the group, and this is well deserved. Come here, you big old basket full of freak steak. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I deserve it? I, yeah, I don't know. We all deserve it. But I, I put everything out on the, the battlefield, moving people, and I'm glad I did. I'm very glad I did. I'm going to oh. grab one of these reindeer hearts and bid you farewell. See you. Neste uke skal norskamerikanerne til Oskarstrand på en kulturell ekskursjon. Johnny walks in first, and all of a sudden he just goes, whoa, whoa! Oh, oh, oh. oh Jesus! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> Og de får vist sine kunstneriske evner innen blant annet fotografi. It's a bath mat on my head. Why are we doing this? Blood! 